Right, so I've started a YouTube channel. Got myself a fancy new camera, so I thought, let's take it to Telford and have a look about. Here's what's coming up. I went on the Sunday this year and it was quite a bit quieter than previous years that I've been. Not great if you're there selling, but what it did mean that I got plenty of room to have a good look around. Despite there being less visitors, the quantity and the quality of the bikes on display was as good as I've ever seen. Clearly, people have been very busy during the lockdown. My favourite bike at this year's show, this amazing Honda TLM 260R built by Tony King. The attention to detail that Tony puts into these builds is incredible. Well done Tony, an absolute beauty. Talking of beauties, how about these then? 1986 Rothmans Honda RTL works bike. I was lucky enough to sneak a ride on one of these ones and what a beautiful bike it was to ride. Even by modern standards the suspension was superb, just so smooth. Best is 1979 Bultaco Sherpa. Probably not his favorite considering he lost the world championship on this, having won it three times on the trot. And then Don Smith's 1975 Kawasaki KT 250. All three bikes on the same stand, what a treat. Hagen are the main sponsors again this year and on the stand they had Chris Kosh's Fantic 300 fitted with a pair of development shocks. Chris has always ran Hagen shocks and they've worked pretty well but these ones have got adjustable damping. I bounced them up and down a little bit on the stand and they did feel really nice. One thing's for sure that if Chris is going to ride them, they're going to work well. I can't wait to get my hands on a pair to give them a test. Here's an interesting bike displayed on Martin Matthews SWM stand, a Monoshock SVM. It's actually the first time that I've ever seen one of these in the flesh. I'm not sure how many were ever produced, but Martin told me that there's only four of them in the UK. 
SVM was formed after the demise of SWM by Mauro Cironi, and the bike clearly utilises many of the SWM jumbo components. The engine was supplied by Motor Vila, and I was particularly interested in this as I'd read the Motor Vila was developed from the Hyro engine that's used in my Armstrong. Two more bikes that were attracting a lot of attention were these beautiful Yamahas built by Stephen Murphy. As well as being an excellent rider, Stephen's clearly a very talented bike builder. I've seen and ridden against many of Stephen's bikes and I can assure you, these bikes will perform just as good as they look. He's got some tremendous natural skill. You know what he used to do on a push bike, 
uh, at the dirt bike shows and sort of like on a park bench, you know, rocking it back and forwards, wheeling it, uh, hopping it around. Um, yeah, he's sort of like taken that to a level now where obviously he was, I think he is still the world's most winningest gold medal in the ISBE with, uh, I think it's either 18 or 19 gold medals. Um, he's been a four times world enduro champion, he's been out to the States and won GNCC uh, and now the last sort of like three, four, five years he's uh, managed to get his foot in the door into uh, to the film and the sort of like and uh, uh, stunts and things like this and obviously uh, he's sort of like doubled up as Jason Bourne in one of the Bourne films and obviously he was a uh, the man that did the big jump in the latest No Time To Die 007 Bond film and uh, yeah, I thought that was a little bit beyond him and I said look, you want to be careful because doing that jump you're either going to do it or you're going to end up in a wooden box. <laughs> uh, fortunately he did it and uh, uh, he, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's naturally achieved a tremendous amount in, uh, in his career and uh, just got a text message from him 20 minutes ago, he's got an event up at Tong in Yorkshire, British Enduro Extreme Championship, which uh, his Fast Eddie events side of the business is, is running on, and yeah, he's, uh, he's doing okay for himself. He's spinning lots of different plates, and he'll drive himself into an early grave unless he sorts himself out, but uh, what he's achieved on the bike is, is great within his own right, uh, as Arthur has done, and, and lots of other people that have stood around here. So that's about all for now. I had a brilliant day at Telford and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments which was your favourite bike. Look out for more videos coming later this year. As the channel name suggests, these will be workshop based. I'll be featuring some of my bikes and looking at the modifications that I've done. I also hope to do some product reviews and some testing. And if I can find room in the workshop, perhaps a project bike. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.